This past week, award-winning actor Lemukhan Tsipa made his lead role debut on the popular Mzanti magic series Shaga Ilembe as the older Shaga. Tsipa took over the reins of Shaga Zulu from the younger version of this particular role, which was played by Ndando Zondi. His debut has received great reviews, but it's also, in some ways, I guess, sparked a debate with viewers questioning his own cultural background. For more on the preparation of this role, what this has meant for him, and possibly the way forward, Nimukhan joins us now in our studio. It's lovely to see you, sir. Thanks for so, coming through. Super pleasure to be here. Thank you for having me. You know, the people I've spoken to about you, because that's what we do sometimes yes. before we have you in studio, describe this calm person who is not necessarily, you know, knocked off his kilter by any of the kind of attention he receives, whether good or bad. Yeah. Does that sound like I think that's a, that's a quite fair and accurate description of, of myself. I've, I've kind of worked my way into, into my own kind of comfortable bubble, which, yeah, I'm operating from. And, uh, yeah, the results are quite decent, I think. Look, it's gotten you this far. You know. And we'll take it. <laughs> yes. But how did that happen? I mean, do you, can you pinpoint it to a time in your journey, perhaps, or do you just find that it's kind of your natural disposition? Yeah, I think it's a bit of a natural thing just based off how um, I was born and raised. I think um, being from a small town in Bangani and having the parents that I did, they just really instilled that like, kind of humility, humility and just groundedness. Um, and just being a person at all times, um, first and foremost, before being a quote-unquote celeb or star or whatever mm. character people want to kind of box you in. So, sure. Yeah. And that's the thing. People don't know that you actually come from Mbangin. You yes. know, despite the fact that your name is Le Mohang yes, uh, yes. And I think a lot of people would have that context, perhaps would see your taking up this role on Shagai Lembe quite differently. Yeah, no, I think, I think once you understand that um, I was literally born and raised in King Gajayo district, which is, you know, one of the successors of, of the great King Shara, um, and literally where uh, Wanobamba was, where Shara had his kingdom, was maybe 20 minutes from where I grew up. So, I mean, I was really immersed in the heart of, of where the Zulu kingdom was founded and, and, and you know, was raised yeah. there amongst, you know. So you, you're no stranger to the story that is being told here. But let's take a few steps back. Yeah. At some stage, somebody comes up to you and says, look, we're trying to put together this never done before kind of production to mm -hmm. tell our story from our perspective. Mm. And we think you should play Shaga. Yeah. What was your response? Well, I didn't believe them at first. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I was like, me? <laughs> Of all people, because for me, it's just such a massive role. And it's kind of one of those larger-than-life superhero um, mythical characters that we grew up being. I always make the analogy with Simpang, and it feels like it's Wakanda and Shaga's the Black Panther, you know. Absolutely. So we grew up knowing this Black Panther kind of figure, and I've kind of grown up now to, to be given that responsibility to, to portray him, and I think it's a massive honor. Yeah. yeah, but it's not the first time you've been given big roles that in some ways drive a particular narrative mm -hmm. for that production. What would you say, though, is different about this one? Because you've been quoted as saying mm -hmm. that this is a life-changing role for you. Yes, yes. I think the difference with this one, um, number one, just from a product perspective, um, it's the language in which we did it in. We've mm -hmm. never um, done scaled work with international kind of quality in our own vernacular languages. Usually we try to keep it in, in English just for the international market's sake. But on this one, we, we didn't compromise with that one. As Africans, which is a proud, proud moment, I think, for me. But I think it was life-changing because of the scale also, which we, we, we shot on. And you, I mean, you see the billboards everywhere and everything. So for me, it's kind of like a, a leveling up moment mm. um, career-wise, which is, which is a great place to be. And could you feel that, like, on set, while you were actually busy with the production itself, could you kind of get a sense that, look, this is, this is a different production, like I'm operating at a very different scale? Because from what we can see of the final product, it feels like whoever was involved here really took their time. You know, mm -hmm. I liken it to, like, marinating your favorite steak slowly yes. because you're not in a rush to eat it, you know what I mean? Um, is that the impression you also got while busy with the production? Definitely. It was a, it was a highly spiritual um, experience uh, for everybody involved. Um, there were so many scenes where we'd shoot where Aban Bavu with our egos and, you know, all the spiritual oh. kind of, yeah, things which, which kind of gave us those signs that, you know, the, 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 the people that two stories were telling are with us because uh, we got visited by a few of them a couple of times, but let me not get into those details. Oh, but I was about to tell us more. No, it's just, you know, well, some Were you not them, taken aback by that? Like, if no, you were I, to ever, you know, go through something like that now, I need yeah. a moment, you know? Yeah, I think, I don't know if I did, because it was so weird. Like, the people that kind of did go through those moments 
um, kind of did the whole things with the ceremonies, whatever, whatever. And um, it was kind of like a weird out-of-body experience where, like, in that moment, a lot of them felt, or the way they describe it, you're kind of looking at yourself with this person taking over, you know, what's happening. So I don't know if I was in any of those um, moments. It could have been possible because, you know, it's one of those things where you're not really in the driver's seat. But mm. um, I think it was just a great team effort and just a great spirit to show that, you know, that the, the, the right people were with us and um, our hearts were in the right place. And I think the reception we're receiving is testament of, of the work that we put in. Sure. Many actors who take this seriously will tell you that acting itself is a spiritual journey, you know. For us who watch from the outside, I'm thinking to myself, are oh, you not taking this characterization thing of it too far? Yeah. You know, um, but I'm, I'm sure it's something that you also need to negotiate, even for a production as intense as Shagai Lembe sometimes mm. gets, you know. Points at which you also need to pull back because mm. it feels like you're losing yourself in the character. Have you had to have those kind of discussions with yourself? Yeah, definitely. I mean, one of the, one of the things... Um, about the king is, 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 I mean, nature to violence, you know. Mm. He was a, a man who <laughs> wasn't quick to negotiate. So that's a trait which obviously you can't really bring into life. And I found while playing this character, there were stages. I mean, I was gymming every day. The hours were also long, whatever, whatever. I was, we were working under extreme conditions, but I found like my temperament was kind of getting a little bit shorter around, <laughs> around those periods. And I, it's, some, it's, you know, one of those moments where you have to still pull yourself towards yourself because um, beyond the craft that we do and the work that we do, you're still a person with a family and friends and, you know, people that don't care about that side of, of mm. your life and they want to, you know, interact with you. So it is a very intricate kind of balancing game. But um, I think over the years I'm developing more and more skills to, to ride both sides. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Interesting you mentioned this idea of you dreaming because, I mean, a lot has been said about the costume and mm. sometimes I think it's because of what the costume reveals. Oh, it, yes, yes. It's more more what it shows than what, <laughs> <laughs> than what it is. Yes. You know. But um, outside of that, on a very serious note, mm. preparation to be able to embody yeah. what the character requires physically. Yeah. You know, take us through that because it doesn't look like you guys were just sitting you know, behind laptops while carrying out these roles. This is a hectic, yeah. physical demand. Yeah. On set. And I think there's a lot of um, layers when it comes to the, to the demands. The A thing is obviously the aesthetic of looking the particular way. B, um, it being a, a film with an action undertow, the movements in those spaces of the fight sequences, etc., have mm. to be done, you know, historically accurate, but also in a way which is, which is entertaining. Um, and also just the conditions of being shirtless and, and oh, in the bush. In winter. We, in winter, yeah. mind you, it, was, it, it wasn't an easy, easy one. But, I mean, we got a lot of support from the team with regards to um, staying in shape. We had uh, personal trainers come and work with us. And uh, for me, I had a, a bit of a unique challenge because I started playing the king at a younger age of about uh, 18, 19, all the way up until I don't want to give the storyline away, but up into his later years. And I also try to physicalize that, so I lost weight for the younger version wow. and then bulked up a little bit for, for the older version just to, um, yeah, have that, that progression on screen as when well. When are you dropping those tips for us who want to bulk up uh, <laughs> in a <I'll> good time? <laughs> <laughs> it's not easy. I'll, I'll tell you that much for free. Yeah. It's definitely not easy, but um, I'm, I'm definitely working on doing a content plan for, for social media on YouTube. Oh, are you serious? I was yeah, joking. No, no, I'm not even joking. Okay. A lot of people want to know. I, I think being in shape is, is something that's very important, and especially like a lot of young people that are feeling like insecure. I mean, a lot of like the older you get, whatever your body is, people really like to settle into right. it, but a, a lot of people in their 20s and uh, a bit young, I love. Um, to challenge themselves, and some of them are still finding themselves. So I'm going to be making uh, content available on my platforms, just educating okay. people on how to get a six-pack as right. quick as possible. If there's <laughs> any fringe benefit from this production, and that is it, we'll take it. Speaking about those insecurities, uh, yeah. I'm sure you must have had a fair share of your own getting mm. into this character because of just the scale of what you're expected to pull off here. Mm. What were they, and how did you try to get over them? I think the first thing was just the imposter syndrome, man, mm. like... Um, I was aware of the conversation that's going to happen because of um, people not knowing my background. But I think it was also the importance of this particular role um, as opposed to, you know, any other role. Because most of my work that I've done locally has been in the language of Zulu because I think it's the most primary um, African vernacular that I do speak. But playing Uzo, mm. you know, the, the founder of what we now know as, as the nation, I knew would be a, a massive point of contention. So 
initially I had a bit of like kind of imposter syndrome, but then I just pulled myself toward myself. I'm like, man, I've worked this hard in this game. You know, I've done all these things, worked on all these amazing projects. Not I'm a dog. Who are right. these people making me doubt who I am? No, no. <laughs> um, you know what I mean. So it, it was just a, like kind of like a brief moment of doubt, which I feel is a natural part of of everybody's kind of process in life. But yeah, we overcame that. We got a lot of assurance and assurance and support from the team as well as the nation, and you know even just about Masakai, mm. you know, who, who who know and love um, my work and, and the things that we do. So. Yeah, eventually we got over that and, and got ourselves into the right positive mind space that you need to embody um, such a great, you know, um, African icon. Sure, and it's come together really, really spectacularly. There's a lot to take from this production. And, you know, often when I watch it, I, I wonder what the, the main message for the people who've poured so much into it mm. would be. So let me ask you as one mm. of the people who played one of the leading roles. Yes. As you were investing so much into it, what were you hoping people who are watching Zulu or not mm. would draw from this production? Um, I think number one is the capability of Africans. Um, a large part of like our consumption of, of, of this, these mediums we consume on all these different streaming platforms, whatever, all this overseas work and we've kind of developed an inferiority complex. Mm. But this project reassures us that man, we're the best also. You know, we can stand toe to toe. We're like Benny McCarthy. We can win Champions Leagues as well, you know. It's not just it's not just meant for the Ronaldos of this world. You as an African child can dream and achieve and make something that the whole world can look at in awe. You know? Absolutely. And you're going to be numbered among the many Africans who've helped us realize that. Thanks for coming through. Really do appreciate your getting us into what it actually took to put on the spectacular role. Lamakhan Sipa, really do appreciate it. Plays Ushaga on Shaga Ilembe. I'm not even going to try squeeze out any kind of spoiler for the next episode because I've tried previously. Yeah, and I that didn't that. work we signed, we signed very <laughs> strong NDA. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what we always defer to. Look, thanks very much for coming through. Really Thank appreciate you your much, time. Bro.